freestyle and about how he became evil, he could sway. You know what I mean? Yeah, a, a team. Yeah. And so, like, Face Off too. You know, the studio. There's big fights about Face Off. Should there be a slash in it? Should it be Face Off? Face slash off. Should there be a space in between it? They're like, this isn't hockey. Like, this is Face Off. People get their faces off and they face off. That's the movie. And Nick Cage, that scene when he gets with Dietrich, when he goes to his really cool club or apartment or loft. Party. And, the, the, yeah. The, yeah, the party. And so he just says, face off. And then he does it again, face off. And then Dietrich goes, face off. They did that to ensure that the, the title was face off. Those lines weren't written. So Nick Cage okay. helped the writers get the movie titled face off by just including it in the movie a lot. And so he and had that makes, much power. So imagine him freestyling about wearing a pink dress when he was younger and becoming evil. That's stressful because you can't really, you know, he's a good dude, but you can't really say that to Nick Cage in 97 because he had just won an Oscar from leaving Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, he was the biggest star on the planet, I would say, probably top five, let's say, Will Smith and Tom Cruise and stuff. But Julia Roberts, Sandra Bullock. But yeah, so they, Denzel, I would say those are like the top, in the top tier. Charlton. In the 90s? Yeah. I would say. I'm trying to think who else is big. Like, because remember Will Smith was every movie he did was yeah, big. Independence Tom Day. Cruise, yeah, that Tom was like Cruise was like, crushing it. Denzel was Zelda. crushing it. Julia Roberts. Arnold, had that, but oh. Stallone was still in the game. Yeah, and but Arnie. Remember in the nineties? Two 90s, lives. Though? Yeah, that was ninety four, right? And then he did a couple movies that weren't as big, like Eraser. So he was huge, but he didn't have. Okay, he was still A A list, but he wasn't. He didn't have the momentum Cage had. He wasn't propelled. He was yeah. like. Free flying. He was not like going up. Exactly. Say, how about like uh, our good man uh, from Die Hard? Bruce Willis. Yeah. Fifth Element. When was that? Like that was ninety. Like, yeah, ninety-seven, right? Yeah. So I mean, but that wasn't a hit. No, but, yeah, he was a hit. Later. It was still a hit. I mean, yeah. it was still all day. But Cage was like, I guess he had... now leaving Las Vegas. He showed he can act, like mm -hmm. not just fighting. Then The Rock kept him going. Yeah, he had the momentum. Let's say so. There's A A list, but he was skyrocketing at the time. How's that sound? Yeah, what do you think of Travolta at that point? Oh, he was skyrocketing too. So I'm looking at – I did a video for Rotten Pulp Tomatoes. Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah. We're, so I did a, a, a video for Rotten Tomatoes where I could, we did Travolta versus Cage, and so I have all their data here. So in 94, he did Pulp Fiction. Then he did White Man's Burden. That wasn't big. But then he did Get Shorty, which was huge. Right? Gene Hackman in that yeah. one? Yeah, and then he did Broken yeah. Arrow, which was huge. Michael, yeah. that was a $100 million plus movie. Just He was an angel, and it made over $100 yeah, million. An angel. Then Phenomenon, yeah. the one where he gets really smart. And then that one made over $100 million. Then he did She's So Lovely. That like background character. They did Mad City with with Dustin Hoffman. That wasn't big, but then he did Face Off. So I mean, he was coming off of Pulp Fiction, Get Shorty, Broken Arrow, Michael Phenomenon. I mean, those those are big business right there. So they were both hot. I mean, they were they were red hot at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, and I think it, this movie works better with them as opposed to what Stallone and Schwar uh, Schwarzenegger. It would have never been as it would have been. Just a, well, I don't want to insult them, but I don't. They, they're not as. Uh, Versatile actors, let's cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. They're more physical and just bulky or like strongman actors. But I can't picture a caster being some like goonish guy. He's more of like a rogue villain. Yeah. Like, you know, a rogue is quick thinking, witty. His fighting style is not like power and muscles. It's like quick, boom, boom, smoosh, gunshots, hiding in the shadows. Like a very, he's got flair, debonair, like a, like a bar, like a rogue. Yeah. A lot of jumping and like, right? like, like jumping in the air and shooting. Finesse, like yeah. you picture him. You can't see Arnold being that guy. Mm -mm. No. And be, when is Arnold a bad guy too? Like that, like get over here, bitch. Yeah. I'm gonna make up with you. I'm gonna like kill you. Like, and then it's Stallone too. Like, you could see Stallone being an archer. That's like his classic role, like just like the good guy cop. Mm hmm But he couldn't have pulled off what Travolta did with his goody goody sanctum. Not, not sanctimonious, but I, I do like the scene where he's like, I don't want to celebrate because our people got killed. I, I guess, and it's true. They got a lot of people got killed. They, I, I oh, seen like, damn, they're almost. He's a jerk. What's his name? He just purposely kills them for fun in the hangar. Yeah, he like singles them out, and he's just like he's like you said. It's fun for him. Mm -hmm. Remember, we keep saying, "Aren't you having fun yet?" Mm hmm And he's just murdering folks, and the, uh, he's he's kind of chaos, right? He's like the Joker before the Joker, I guess. Yeah, I would it reminded say. me like. When I thought of a pink dress, suddenly when you tell me that, it makes me think of Heath Ledger when he's in the hospital wearing a dress coming out of the hospital. Yeah. Whoa. When he's dancing as the priest. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if he channeled Nick Cage a little bit in that movie. So, like, these things from the past and the future, but, like, that's the imagery I'm getting. Wow. Oh, I love that. Tell me that. Oh, my God. Hey, me that right there. hey, so how about this? Let's take a quick break. 
And then when we come back, we will talk more face-off. We'll be right back. Boom. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. And Mateo, I have something cool for you. I was listening to the commentary, and I love that. All right, so there's two things I love. The final boat chase they shot first with all their second units, and then the studio loved it so much they gave the movie extra money, which makes me happy. It's kind of funny. And then also in the beginning, the plane chase with the helicopter, the original script had a big action scene, but they cut it because it cost too much money. But then John Woo said, I want this scene, so they shot it, and that cost more. So they cut an action scene that was going to cost too much money, but then they filmed an action scene that cost more money with that opening plane chase. I mean, a plane is taken down by a helicopter. You know, you don't see that that and much. I, you'll see that. And I heard, I read, I looked into that scene, actually, and they said that so expensive, like you said, that they only probably had – John Woo had put full of cameras in there because he knew if they screwed up, that's over, game yeah. over. Yeah. He couldn't – he could not screw this shot up. So they have so many cameras in there, depending on the angles, if one angle, there was a mistake. Because I, I looked into that exact scene, and they said it was, like, really expensive. Yeah. And he couldn't afford to, like, oh, reshoot. No, they had to get it right. Get that coverage. So, I mean, if you blow up a couple cameras, that's fine. You don't have to go back and reshoot it. Man, that's why I love them. This movie – they blow up planes. They blow up boats. I mean, when you see these action scenes, these that, that stunt double who was skiing on his feet, his feet got so swollen they had to cut his pants off him because they couldn't take the pants off that stunt. Oh, I saw, yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah. It's yeah. nuts. And like just the stunt crew that they had. I mean, this movie had like just the best that money could buy, I think, as like the cinematographer Oliver Wood. That dude has done so many movies. And so it's one of these rare – I know this is going to sound like a weird word, world, uh, word, but nowadays, and I'm not hating on these movies, they're they're very digital, right? They're very, there's just a lot of effects. This felt like a analog movie. Does that like I'm not insulting. Raw, it. well, raw, like you yeah. see, what is there is there. There's not a lot of polish with like extra graphics that are like making these movements. Even the actors, like the moves they do, the contortions, the action. It's like. But it's the era before that, like yeah. pre. This is like Matrix, pre-Matrix, like the bending and shooting mm -hmm. and these kind of things. It reminds me of, when I watched it recently. It made me think a little bit of Matrix, the way they shoot guns and stuff. Well, they so the Matrix, they loved the the create the, the Wachowskis. They loved John Woo. So you watch the gunfighting in these films, and it's from. I mean, it's it's straight up from Woo. I mean, just his jumping and his ballet and his movements. I mean. Remember, if you think about the movements in Matrix, they're pretty quite, I mean, they're slow motion, but they're very balletic, not balletic. They're very elegant. They're very, uh, what's the word? Gr graceful. Graceful. And so I, but that's what I think, man. Chow Yun fat and hard boiled in this movie. I think, I think Travolta and Cage do a really good job with their jumping and shooting and their sort of graceful movements. But yeah, I just really like how, I don't know, it's just an elegant it's it's this weird, like so I, I showed it to my wife and she's like I don't know what to think about this. She likes how hard boiled a hundred times more than this. Oh movie. really? Yeah. Because I guess she's I, I guess the over the top performances and then the whole Joan Allen subplot kind of turned her off. But it's I don't know man. It I, I guess she feel like she's a victim. Yeah. I don't know what's viewed as a perspective as a woman or like the new ways we're thinking. Like is it viewed now at like she's just a victim in the movie? I would say so because it's. Listen, it's being played like she's being played essentially. Exactly, and Travolta goes off and becomes Nick Cage, or you know what I mean. Archer becomes Troy, but he doesn't tell her, and so she's basically you know, she she has this v villain come into her home, and she doesn't know it. And at the end, she's like, "Ah, oh, it's cool." Like it's it's that's. Uh... <laughs> but I mean, is it not, well? You're right. It's but she actually is instrumental to take him down. Yeah, like well, yeah, she, no, she like gets takes it, yeah. the blood. She's not just some helpless girl like women. She like gets the blood sample, mm -hmm. and and I love the fact that the daughter too is instrumental. She yeah. stabs him in the leg, and that I love. It's all him. about the word Troy. Now that I think about it, the Trojan horse tactic. Yeah, he's going in where you shouldn't go. Like right, that's how like the Trojan War is, right? He was hiding in that body. So yeah. it's all hiding, man, and that's everything's hiding in this movie. Like the knife is hiding. Yeah. That's, stabs him. That's a good callback right there. I love it, man. Don't you? <laughs> there you go. I feel like, champ, like a champ here now. But yeah, I never really thought of it. But yeah, th that's the concept of the movie too. Because mm -hmm. right. I mean, yeah, you're so sneaking in. Each other. Yep, you're sneaking in. And it's uh, – and, and you know what I kind of like too is I guess one, one good thing about this movie is there's consequences, right? He he decides to go undercover and – you know, I love that scene where he finds out he's going to be locked in prison for 100 years. No, 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 no. Like he, it's so silly. 
a lot of people die. Like his friends die, their friends die. This weird game that these two are playing puts his family in danger. There's danger in this. And I think sometimes I watch movies and I don't feel like there's stakes or I don't feel like I don't need wanton murder, right? But I do feel murderous actions and and absolute just dedication to getting your guy which risk puts your family at risk. It, it there's there's consequences in this movie, I think. And I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Good for and, and I think that works too. Is that there's there's, I mean, Gina Gershon dies, like his girlfriend dies, his his friends die, his brother dies, and this is just a game that these two are playing, and they suffer big time. But I think that that's what would happen, right, Mateo? Like that's you you, know, you play the game, you know, you're gonna lose. It's and people it's, are around you are gonna get affected. Yeah. Like in small ways, big ways, even things like in, in uh, action, things we do in our life in smaller scales. Like I ain't going out shooting people here in Korea neither. I don't think you're taking people out in Georgia. <laughs> um, nope. Side job. But like in other factors, decisions we make will affect people we love or don't. Like you, you, you're talking about Corona in certain moments in your life. Like people go somewhere, do things, and then it could affect ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So in that movie, Archer is really greedy because he had him. Case was closed. Like, yeah. I got the guy. And then they're like, they tempt him with the fish. They're like, oh, look, what if we go in deeper, one more level? Like, let's get go and get the ball. Like, and then guess what? And he told his wife, too, what was it, the scene before? Like, baby, we're done. I'm retiring. Like, I'll stay home. I'll get a good job. She's happy. We've closed that chapter, right, with our mm -hmm. son. He's passing away. It was done. Yeah. But no, he needs more. It's stupid they didn't tell his wife, too, because I don't know if it's stupid or not. Is it stupid they didn't tell his wife? I mean, it is a probably protocol, though. That's normal. Yeah, I think it's if we classified. Have to go re realism. Let's let's go realism. Yeah, I think true. if we were talking, it is it is a selfish move, but realism. I think you wouldn't tell your wife. I mean, he could, but it's not. He has to be like, and he's a professional. He's a goody two shoe. Ain't gonna break the rules. Yeah, it's Archer. True. I wonder should... if they took Archer from the TV show Archer too. Whoa, that'd be amazing. At that'd least be like. A... Uh, yeah, you're right. And then also that bomb was that's the weird do you think that's the weirdest movie bomb in the history of movie bombs? Because Well, I love it. Look Oh sorry that like, part is so funny. But is go for it. it about like as executive decision, right? The whole movie revolves around it, it's it's what Joe Man uh um it, it Joe Morton, he's in a stretcher and he can't move. And then it's um Kurt Douglas? You mean that movie with the airplane? Yeah, with Kurt with Russell. Steven Seagal? And then and yeah, Steven Seagal, Seagal and then Oliver Gets Platt. Quickly? Oliver yeah, Platt yeah, yeah. detonates, uh, saves the world by putting the plane by putting his straw in it, and so it doesn't detonate. That whole movie revolves around this bomb. This movie, there's a bomb, but it's done by hour, like the first hour. Like, Travolta just goes it's, and gets rid of it. It's the weirdest. <laughs> there's a week and timer. There's a one week timer on it. Yeah, which is insane, and I love it. But it's such a weird bomb. It's the weirdest movie bomb in cinema. Like Broken Arrow. There's a ticking clock and a bomb blows yeah. up underground. This is – it's a bomb. That, like This is the plot of the movie. This bomb is going to go off. And then they just boop, doo, doo, boop, But it's boop. not the plot. It's yeah. like a sleeper agent bomb too. It's like a joke though. Like the even his brother Pollock, when he does it, it's like more of like a vanity bomb. Yeah. Like look at this funny bomb I can do because they're crazy. Yeah. To them, it's like they don't – there's no practice. There's no practicality here. It's like we're just going to cause – Chaos. chaos and kill people. The Joker. Chaos, man. The Joker, like, it's just like, let's have fun. And Pollock does it, like, they, they explain the bomb. It's like, haha, I'm such a genius. I made this crazy bomb. And I don't, like, yeah. care. No, they didn't. They were going to And the way he disarms it, I love it. That's p part of the comedy. When they set it up, when he's like, I know I know the code for the bomb. And he comes there and he's like, get away. And they're like, sir, we can't. He's like, and he does. <laughs> clear the and, building. You know, yeah. Clear There's the building. I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He becomes the hero. The hero. And. and while what's his name's in prison, like dying, like struggling, oh, yeah, and he's just like Times Man of the Year. Yeah, and you know getting what's reporting and all like <sighs> he because he's playing the game and he loves it. He's like infiltrated the world. He's all like he's going around grabbing he, butts. I love it. Yeah, yeah, he's just a total dirtbag. Like, and he's good <laughs> at it. And he even like kills his boss with the heart attack. Yeah, Karen. What is it? Karen is that her name? Yeah. Like, uh, he's had a sudden stroke. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like. Chops him in the neck. That was that was his mentor too, and everyone. I, I love how the final, the finale of the movie revolves around his funeral, too. Which you know that was like his that was his 
Victor Lazaro, right? Wasn't that his? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He got taken out too. Everybody gets taken out. Like, and speaking of a.